With our world lead now, Secretary of State John Kerry says he is, quote, confident and hopeful that he and his Russian counterpart, Sergei Lavrov, will reach an agreement for a humanitarian ceasefire in Aleppo, Syria. This, as Russia claims that Syrian regime forces have temporarily suspended all military actions in the war-ravaged city today to help 5,000 civilians flee. But CNN crews on the ground say they can still hear shelling and explosions in addition to rifles being fired. CNN's Frederick Pleitkin takes us now inside Aleppo, Syria. Jake, in the past 24 hours, the Syrian Air Force has further escalated its airstrikes on those rebel-held areas in the east of Aleppo. Now, of course, at the same time, those rebel areas are continuing to shrink, apparently only about four square miles left where the rebels still control any sort of terrain. At the same time, more and more people are trying to get out, are trying to flee, and we witnessed some devastating scenes at one of the crossings where they go from east to west Aleppo. As the rebels increasingly lose their grip on Aleppo, Syrian armed forces continue to pound the besieged areas, many killed and wounded in the crossfire. We came to this frontline crossing just as a man was being evacuated, claiming he was shot by rebels as he tried to flee. They shot me as I was running out, he says. They don't allow anyone to get out. They said, are you going to the regime areas? The opposition strongly denies its fighters would harm civilians. But the rebels do acknowledge they won't be able to hold out in Aleppo much longer. And that realization is leading to an avalanche of people trying to flee the rebel districts. Syrian troops throwing some bread, but not nearly enough to quell the hunger of the many who've been starving for months. The Syrian military has made major advances once again in the past 24 hours, and we can see that as the army moves forward, more and more people are coming out of those former besieged areas. Many of those fleeing families with small children, struggling to carry the few belongings they were able to take. Many overpowered by emotions, some with barely enough strength to walk, others too frail to walk at all. The Syrian army has amassed a massive force at this front line, the local commander with a clear message to the rebels. Look at this scene, he says, these are your families. Surrender yourselves and drop your arms. Come back to the country and hopefully our leadership will forgive you. But for now, the fight goes on. This family, one of the many to cross into government-controlled territory, now in safety, but still in agony. Things used to be good, this elderly woman says. May God act out revenge on those who brought us these difficult circumstances, and may God protect us. And so they walk on, weak and traumatized, moving into an uncertain future. Certainly a devastating state that many of these people were in that we saw come out of those areas. And you know, at the same time, many people here asking whether or not there could be some sort of negotiated ceasefire, a humanitarian ceasefire here for the east of Aleppo. But judging by the pace of the operations of the Syrian military, it really looks as though they are trying to force a military solution. Jake? All right, Fred Pleitkin, thank you.